the last 32 Scottish Open finalists last year, Players' Championship semi-finalists this year. From Leicester, Joe O'Connor. Sportsman Scotland has ever produced. Winner of 31 ranking titles. Five times a UK finalist, three times a champion, four crucible crowns. He is the Wizard of Wishaw, John Higgins. Here comes a two-time ranking event winner and World Championship semi-finalist. Twice a UK quarter-finalist. An unflappable Scot who loves the big stage, the Glasgow Gladiator, Anthony McGill. And finally, to the greatest player of all time. 30 years ago today, he won the first of his seven UK crowns, and three decades later, he's still at the peak of his powers, the Rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Anthony, do you want to call? It's ahead. Ronnie, it's your choice. You're going to break okay. Thank you. The first frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Well, let's go back to this day in 1993. Bill Clinton is in the White House. John Major in number 10. Phones were still things you made calls on. Tweets were what birds did. But then, as now, there was a fascination with a certain Ronnie O'Sullivan. And here we are on the 30th anniversary of his first capture of the UK Championship title. He's still world number one. He is still the man. We saw that from the introduction there. A lot of excitement that he's back in town on this very special day. As far as Anthony McGill's concerned, the gloves are on for this match. He's got his <laughs> carbon fibre cue, he's got his glove. He has beaten O'Sullivan at the Crucible, but he's lost the other seven meetings. It's true what he said, though, isn't it, Neil Anthony, in his interview? It does feel differently in the arena when Ronnie's playing. Yeah, that's right. Of course it is. And uh, that is unlikely to ever change while he's still part of the professional tour. Can't think that much is going to alter. The fan base is still there. Yeah, I mean, everything you mentioned is very interesting, the way you introduced uh, those 30 years. I guess Snooker's not really changed much, but... As you pointed out, he's a player with a graphite cue or carbon fibre cue that O'Sullivan is up against today. That's a new thing. It is kind of very new, that. How long he'll continue to use it for. Of course, we'll see if he's using it in a year or whatever. Then we'll know it really is the something to keep. Anyway, he's in trouble on this first shot. O'Sullivan has put him in a snooker. Been putting in a lot of hours in that practice room. Our studio is in there. McGill has invariably either been in there practicing or just sitting there watching someone else practice. Well, O'Sullivan, of course, started out the year before his first win, 92. His first ever match was in the Norbrecht in Blackpool against Jason Scott in the <laughs> first qualifying round. It was a long road in those days to the venue. This is his 119th match he's played in this tournament alone. Five years since he last won it. And of course, last year here in the quarterfinals, he was whitewashed by Ding Jun Wee. McGill has had to fight through the qualifiers, and that's not an easy process, but he actually came through reasonably comfortably. He beat uh, the young Chinese player, He Gyo Kang, 6 3, Anthony Hamilton, 6 2. Well, it looked a good shot, but there is a red that's gone close to the left corner that is reachable. Although, you can see how far it is between cue ball and object ball, and it's just off straight. So, I mean, this is actually more of a test than maybe a camera angle, which kind of foreshortens the the shot is, uh, is telling us. Wow. Getting it onto a colour might have been an even bigger problem. Just to say, he, he's been given permission to wear trainers today because he has an ankle injury. Yeah, that's happened before, actually, in this tournament. So if you're wondering about the footwear, he has got 
permission. Ronnie O'Sullivan, what? McGill is a twice quarter finalist in the UK Championship 2014 2021. A tough match for anyone, clearly. And memories of that World Championship win still fresh. It's, it's interesting because it is 7 1. There are the trainers I mentioned that Ronnie's wearing. It is 7 1 on the head to head, but I can think the one everyone remembers is that obviously that World Championship that was 13 12 to McGill. Yeah, I think that counts double, doesn't it? I mean, there was a time actually in the old ranking list that the World Championship points did count double to any other event, but just the significance of that match it shouldn't be underestimated. A long match at the Crucible, three sessions, he got the verdict. in the ball and getting position both parts of it were not easy he's going to try and lay in behind brown i think via the green here in fact just straight in behind the green instead answer to miguel what Foul and a miss. It's almost the way that it Anthony happens McGill. so often around that two cushion Anthony. shot. Players play to just glance it and they're happy enough if the first effort is a complete miss. Almost just dipping your toe in the water and getting the angle sorted for attempt two or even three. <coughs> Giving away points, four penalty points is not as bad as leaving a chance, clearly. That's why the miss rule exists. So I made the correction. The winner plays uh, the winner of the match on table two tonight between Robert Milkins and Tep Chara Nu. Luke, he certainly had a look at those couple of reds set up for the corner pocket. And it wasn't a, a dead plan. He had to make it into one. Interesting that he didn't take the brown on. We're seeing a lot That's of players take those bolt colours to middle pockets to engineer an early chance, but not McGill. He's just trying to take the sting out of the game, get into it and Keep O'Sullivan as quiet as you can early on. I mean, the, the line was good. Absolutely it's actually a very difficult yeah. shot. He's trying to hit just a single red off four cushions. And, and this can go wrong. You know, if he does overhit it and he goes beyond the red and he hits okay. another red, he could leave something. There might be a red to the left middle, which okay. is potable. So this is not some kind of innocuous escape, which won't lead anywhere. If he doesn't uh, 
get it right could go wrong and of course he's going to keep being put back if he keeps missing as well Foul. Like that. Anthony Miguel, four. I don't know if there is a red that goes to the middle, like I say. I wonder if Miguel has seen it yet. Yeah. Either way, he can't get to it. <coughs> Difficult shot, this, like I say, just to run up in behind one red, not a bunch of reds. It's the right okay. red that he's just looking to nudge. He's gone wider this time. He's gone wider. And that was the problem, you see. He's made the adjustment, maybe by just hitting it with more pace, and sometimes it just the ball would throw off differently from the cushions. Well, McGill has definitely won the safety exchange in this opening frame. Now, with the chance, he's got to capitalise on that. Exactly. He's done sort of half the work, if you like, earning the chance. He struggled a bit. They played recently in China in the uh, International Championship, and he did have a lot of chances that day. Didn't really score heavily enough. Lost 6-2. No. I was thinking, though, the first year O'Sullivan played in this tournament, he, pl he beat Nigel Gilbert, who I think he wore a, a white glove, didn't he? Yeah, uh, he did. He was one of the gloved players of that uh, era. There were a few. Uh, still not quite sure why players do wear them, certainly Six. in the UK. I mean, obviously, I can recall playing Peter Ebden in uh, an event in the Far East and he wore a glove, but uh, I don't ever think I saw him wearing a glove at any other point. So maybe it was just a... Seven, seven. Condition to be playing in. Well, that's not a very favourable kiss. I mean, you play that shot across into that red a lot of times, and you wouldn't finish. That's. Uh, yeah, sure. unfavourably as he has very often. Anything but that kiss on that middle red leaves him on a choice of reds. The recovery shot is not an easy one. Thanks, Anthony. So made a good recovery there. We had a, would have been very frustrated had that opportunity not amounted 30. to much. So it's a pleasing start for McGill. This it's only half a frame. Thirty. Yeah, Alan McManus was saying he went recently to the unit in Glasgow where McGill practices alongside. Maguire and Higgins, and he said Higgins was playing on his own. McGill and Maguire were having a match against each other, and he said <laughs> all the time he was there, not a word was spoken. It was all business. It's all about putting the work in. It's not a snooker club where there are distractions. It's a purpose-built facility. I must say, I'm, I've not been there, but it sounds a bit sterile. Good, yeah. doesn't just call it the unit, at least call it the potting shed or something. Sounds like it might have a bit of charm about it.
13. Well, important to settle down in any match, but he himself said it's always different playing Ronnie O'Sullivan, so he needs to put the frame away now, just settle into the proceedings. I remember he played him once in a Home Nation semi-final at the English Open, and he came in our studio the day before and said, I can't beat him. But I think he's moved on from that, because since then, of course, he has beaten him in the biggest event on the calendar. One thing about snooker, and it becomes a bit of a cliche, but there is truth in it, is that it doesn't matter who you're playing, you know, the greatest of all time, someone who isn't going to miss anything, but if you can get in before them and not let them get out of their chair, it doesn't make any difference who they are. And this frame has been played out like 55. that. Sullivan has had very little table time, long time to think. McGill has played a very... Consummate frame here, almost perfect frame, dare I say. You think of a perfect frame as a 147, but his safety is immaculate and he's made a frame winning break when the chance came. He could do no more. Sixty-two. And he's still going. And the other thing about snooker, the players will look at each other and see what they're doing, what advantages maybe they're they're gaining. If McGill wins this UK Championship, we'll turn up at the Scottish Open. There'll be about 20 players with, a, <laughs> with one of those carbon fibre cues. He might be starting something special. Seven, sir. He clearly believes in it, and he's played, as you say, a perfect frame, really. The good safety to initiate the chance, and then he's taken the chance. Seven, two. Seventy four. Seventy five. Well, the one thing about it, using a different cue is uh, Certainly one that's not made of wood is that the, you know, the throw and the use of side is going to be very different. And the only way to overcome that is putting in a lot of practice. And as I say, that's what he's been doing. In the end, your muscle memory and your, your instinct will change and get used to the new equipment you're using. And quite frankly, he looks absolutely superb in this break. Maybe it's given him something else to think about, a new challenge. 89 91 94 We heard the excitement in the crowd as Ronnie O'Sullivan was introduced, but in the main, in this frame, they've been watching Anthony McGill, who needs this blue, to start with a century. So any thoughts he might be overall today have been dispelled in frame one? It's been an absolutely delightful break. Beautifully constructed. 109. 
Yeah, the 30th anniversary of the first UK Championship victory. Will Anthony McGill be the party pooper today? He hopes so, and if he carries on like that, it may well happen. 116, the clearance from McGill. He played the good safety to set up the chance. He took the chance brilliantly. He leads already in York. 1-0. The crowds have once again flocked to the Barbican. It's been uh, a full house pretty much throughout so far. You kind of expected it today for Ronnie O'Sullivan, but he's a frame down. Anthony McGill, great 116 clearance from him. He's another one of these players who we sort of think of as a top 16 player. He has been, of course, in the 16. Currently 21st. A deep run here in York. He could be back in. And, of course, the Masters is the cutoff for... Uh, biggest invitation event on Sunday after the final. So he could, you know, potentially play his way into that. But right now he's got this match to think about and only this match. Well, first impressions, one frame of a possible 11. I think O'Sullivan's going to have to play very well to win here. Because he, even here he's in a spot of bother from the break off shot. Very interesting match, I think, we've we'll got to look forward to this afternoon here between this pairing. Yeah, and uh, just on that unit, I think they're quite proud of the fact, the three of them, that it's no fun. It's not, it's not meant to be. Even just the reputation it has when you hear about it, all oh, they're putting the work in. They're not doing anything other than playing snooker. You know they're prepared properly. Of course, Maguire didn't qualify. Joe O'Connor actually beat him. He could have played Higgins. Foul. And a miss. Goodness me. I mean, if it's called a miss here, we're in, we'll be here all day, I think. I, won't do I, I have to say, I think there's a chance it might be going back. It's a nasty business if it has to. I mean, I really hope, for the sake of our referee, that uh, the balls aren't replaced, because that would take an age. I don't know how many balls move, but it was a lot. Anyway, seemingly he's going to play it to the great relief of our referee. Yeah, Rob Spence, I think, was expecting to have to put them back. He'd be uh, sending McGill a Christmas card, maybe. Well, as we always say, he does miss, and uh, that might be costly. I wouldn't like to say it would be the right shot to put them back, because I uh, don't think you could ever recreate the table as it was, quite honestly. Sullivan thought you'd get through the red and the green. Now he's in. One. Seven. A little straight, I think, on this. Maybe a slight angle to play with on the blue. Not much, though. enough to get on that bottom right that's an excellent shot and if he's quite straight he could get onto the back to the opposite corner but I'm not sure if it is straight enough from that side of the table and play the black that would give him options Thirteen.
20. We saw O'Sullivan earlier in the season win the Shanghai Masters Big Invitation event. He's also been a semi-finalist at the International Championship, quarter-finalist at the Wuhan Open, but he's withdrawn from five other events, including the recent Champion of Champions. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Once again, has he got an angle on this bottom red, or is he a little straight? No, he just, he's going to have to hit something else on the way through here to uh, whatever colour he plays on. 45. Yeah, and it always leads to a problem, but with the brown still close at hand, it should be less of a concern. If he plays this plain ball, he just has to avoid crashing into the green ball on the way back towards the reds around two cushions. Well, it looked, <laughs> looked a certainty, didn't it? Can't imagine what he was thinking there. Either it's going to or it isn't. Ryan Disappointing Sullivan. end to that break. 49. 49, OK, but not enough to in any way win the frame. So gradually got further out of position on his last three or four shots. That looks close, doesn't it, to a plant? But as you can see, it's all one thing having a plant, but if you can't get to it, then it's no good. I think answers on a postcard as to what he played there. A lot of balls move, but uh, if he has left an awkward shot, he's only by luck. What well, did he try and make the plant? Make it into a three-ball plant? 
Well, if he did, they didn't move until <laughs> about five seconds after he hit them. <laughs> Got lucky, actually. Very much so, Dave. Yeah. I mean, uh, the whole bunch of reds over the only red that he could part. trouble that uh, McGill has inflicted on O'Sullivan. Yeah, not least because he's opened all the reds up there and he's got the snooker. So suddenly the table was looking quite nasty and now it's looking a lot more open. Obviously, that was not the red he tried to hit. It was the very bottom red that's on the cushion he tried to lay up to. Just takes you back to the previous chance and how he didn't put it away. OK, it's not going to be easy with the pink safe, but, uh, well, I mean, he can certainly inch his way back into the frame from here. Maybe even more so than that. Well... wrong side of the so a good shot to get back onto a red through bulk will be required here the green being away from its spot helps him if he does play around the angles six Well, it's absolutely perfectly played. Seven. Because he could quite conceivably have played O'Sullivan in the World Final 2020. That extraordinary. It was, a Saturday, it was a Friday, wasn't it? Behind closed doors, the semi final day, the last day, where he lost to Kyron and Ronnie beat Selby. 15. I suppose that frame that uh, took place kind of summed up the whole of the championship, didn't it? Played in the middle of you know, August. Behind closed doors, so many things looking back were different about it. And that frame was just one of the most unbelievable things I've seen that he lost. 20. Still early in the match, but this feels a frame of importance. You can get the frame one before the pink is required. But even that will not be easy. With the black not potable to left corner, this red. You know, you have to force it in at mid range, get onto a, a colour which won't be easy to do.
35. Forty. Forty one. Yes, you also want to get fairly close to these when you're rolling them down the cushion. 48. He hasn't got much of an angle, so you will have to play it with a degree of pace, which always brings about the chance you might miss it. Your accuracy comes into question here with these. 49. Well, it fly in anyway. I didn't think he did it all that well, but uh, it was gobbled up. Good shot, but unfortunately 56. not so. Just going into the brown ball. Had he escaped the brown, he'd have been the angle to get from yellow to green. So there's life in this frame. He's not going to get it one here. Anthony McGill, 56. But a good closing shot in that break. Sullivan will need the pink.
may be able to get to the potting angling. Certainly, it seems, get to some of the yellow ball here. But whether he would want to take it on, it seems unlikely, unless he could get on the green from it. Maybe he feels he can. Oh, I think he played that shot. It's very well done as well. It's an excellent safety shot. That's put Sullivan in big trouble with the, the object ball right in the centre of the table. There's nowhere to hide. Foul and a miss. Yeah, this is granite snooker, isn't it, from McGill? Anthony McGill, four. Yeah. Happy to accept the four points. 15 in it now. Yes, he wants to make sure he hits it sooner rather than later, obviously, to avoid needing snookers. But before, right. McGill only needs the yellow as well. Yeah. Getting on the green will present some sort of a challenge. Yeah. So hit it to hopefully get it safe. That's all he can really achieve here. He hasn't got that part of it at all. Like I say, though, just yellow to green. It, I mean, it's not a... For a right-hander, that difficult if you finish right behind the green. But that's what he's now got to do. Two. Oh, I mean, he couldn't have put it anywhere better than he had. Absolutely A1. and uh, Perfect to get on the brown. Whatever happens in this Five. match, you know, Sullivan knows that he should have won this frame. The first frame, not so. Yeah, he was in, wasn't he? Lost his way on 49, lost position. But no. also, we've seen a lot of players come out against O'Sullivan in a big tournament and basically quake in their boots. McGill is not doing that. He's doing the opposite. He's turned the screw when he's had to in good safety. And then he's taking the chances when they come along. Awesome. Very strong start, this, by the Scot. Anthony McGill, 14. Yeah. So Anthony McGill making the early running here at the Barbican New York this afternoon. He leads the seven times UK champion, Ronnie O'Sullivan, by two frames to nil. Things well. He's keeping O'Sullivan out, which is what you have to do. Touching ball. Touching ball, so Sullivan can just play away from the Reds, try and send it into a position of great difficulty. For McGill. But doesn't quite achieve that. Had to 12 results so far, seven seeded players have won and five qualifiers. Of course, we've got four more to come today. So, it's um, relatively even so far, and obviously a lot of close matches, although Mark Selby last night completely one-sided against Mark Joyce. Judd Trump as well, 6-1 yesterday afternoon. Other than that, it's all really been quite tight.
A rather strange table here for, for safety shots of any real significance. You'd be given that you're not really going to play to the bulk end because of the red up there. I mean, it's not a problem. It's just, why would you play down there with the red there? So, I mean, it's, to say it's not quite right, but it's odd. McGill, if he moves that red, it'll open things up. Now, I suppose that just adds a bit of normality to the frame from now. Sullivan will push that red up and down the table and we can almost start again. Yeah. One thing we have seen from him, particularly in the Chinese events, is he's been relatively quiet in matches, but still dug in and then suddenly produced a couple of bursts for a couple of frames of big breaks. So as long as his attitude's good, OK, he's not made a good start. But as long as he's business like, you still fancy something could happen here for him. Cheers. His problem, really, though, is his opponent, who's played really well so far. Well. <laughs> Worth seeing again, delightful queuing that one. The chances are, but of course, if you're ever going to go into the bunch, I think there was the prime opportunity. Six. Seven. Well, the initial pot was brilliant and he wasted no time trying to make things happen, get the balls open. Thirty. Yeah, he felt he could only play that shot. It was always a little bit of a risk screwing into a bunch and trying to screw out of them again. And, you know, the red on the cushion near the cue ball is a slight annoyance to him. I don't think he's in his line of queuing, but he's definitely a bit of a distraction there. Well, enough to stop him potting it. That's frustration there. Ronnie O'Sullivan, 14. He just, once again, got out of position a couple of times to the point where the blue was missable and did everything but go in, actually. Look at that. Goodness. That was close. What? McGill obviously want to from a psychological perspective, pick up on that and take advantage here. O'Sullivan has certainly been second best so far.
kind of a mystery, I think, with McGill. Why he always seems to come good in the World Championship. Sorry. He was quarterfinals again last year. Why it doesn't happen more regularly during the season? He has won two ranking events, the shootout, which he said shouldn't be one. That's another argument. Indian Open, but they're six, seven years ago now. Because he's clearly a terrific player. Eight. Well, that, that uh, wasn't part of the plan, but if the red does pop to the middle, it'll be handy. I'm not sure what he attempted there. It certainly wasn't to glance the bunch. It was either to hit them or slide past them. But either way, he has a red available. Anthony McGill. Yeah, the miss has come, but it's not really left anything very accessible. There's a few shouts have come on Ronnie, but the opening shot he's left with will not be an easy one. <laughs> to the point where he didn't play it at all. Could really do with this frame, O'Sullivan. I don't think uh, going 3 0 down against McGill in good form is going to be uh, an easy assignment, quite honestly. Just get the feeling it uh, a lot of talk about the 30 year anniversary today and of course sometimes these plans don't really go how they should there was no, there was no assumption he was going to win but quite honestly it's been quite a one-sided match in these turn a bit frames McGill has scored better and also his safety has been better. Sort of feel the crowd waiting for that moment of O'Sullivan and inspiration to come. It looked like he might at the start of this frame, but the break didn't come to much. At the moment, it's uh, about digging in here. Yeah, I mean, it's best of 11. I think, you know, if you're in O'Sullivan's corner now, I don't know how he thinks because he's a little bit different to most others. But you're thinking, look, we've got this frame and one more frame to play before the mid-session. You've got to get a piece of the action. You've got to try and get two all or at least three one down. And then have a rethink. But as you say, it's a question of just getting frames on the board, digging in. <coughs> taking these sort of chances when they come. Because he's on the red.
Well, there could be a frame-winning shot here to get this red and get on a high-value colour, but it's very difficult to make it happen. One. His next shot, if he plays pink, and I think you get the feeling he really has to play the pink here. With a little cannon on red, it could be a very key shot in the context of this frame. That looks okay. That looks okay. Seven. Eight. Well, you could see the bit of frustration where the cue ball was finished there. It's just hard work at the minute to sort of get anything going. Yeah, I mean, you're screwing back either to avoid the red or hit more of the red than he did. That little nick off it was the reason he's queuing from here now. The cue ball's going to have to motor to get round for the reds. I think the rest so. will have to be used, which Sullivan is, is good. He's a good rest player, but uh, you know, if he could have played left-handed, that would have been perhaps a better option. Don't think he can reach it very easily. Maybe he can. It's a struggle. Eleven. Very nice shot, that. Very nice. Well, that's got to be his best shot so far because it's opened the frame up. It's given him every chance now to close to 2-1. Two, 2-1. If you have seen the new film, The Edge of, Edge of Everything, where he was mic'd up at the Crucible, you'll know that he lives every shot when he's playing, regardless of anything that's said before or afterwards. When he's out there, he's ultra-competitive. He can't possibly have won the amount that he has done without being that way. Well, the last and more conventional shot here, right-handed. He's played a left-handed shot, two rest shots, striving for perfect position. That'll do. 26. Twenty seven. Thirty two. Thirty three. So he's had to work hard Four. to get an opening. McGill left that red over the right corner. And O'Sullivan can win the frame now with the two open reds. 4-2-1. Yeah, very welcome frame, this one, because it, you just had a bad feeling, if you're an O'Sullivan fan, about the way it was just panning out. But I think the shot, initial shot where he played to just pop the pink from its spot and the cue ball on that right side was actually maybe a better shot than it looked. It, it made all these things happen. And maybe not the most O'Sullivan-like frame to win when he, with his back to the wall in the match, but uh, win it he has. 57. Just needed a frame, didn't he? And he's won it pretty handsomely in the end. Wow. 
62. Sixty-four. Thanks. Sixty-seven. It's an interesting match. He's been made to work for these. McGill has looked good so far. Seventy-one. Not quite sure how he finished there, but the frame's long since won. Don't think he's ever used the rest so much as he has in this frame. Cheers. Seen all the same. Eighty-two. Crowd enjoying this. They've waited a while for it to happen in the match, but after an hour's play, Bonnie O'Sullivan. He's on the scoreboard with that uh, sparkling 89 clearance. That's what he needed just to get involved in, in this match. So Anthony McGill's lead here in York is reduced to 2-1. 89. Just waiting for Anthony McGill to return, but Ronnie O'Sullivan, the 89 break on the scoreboard. Great to see those pictures from 30 years ago. Some of the people there, Alan Hughes, the great MC, always gave it the big build-up. Of course, a young Stephen Hendry. I mean, Stephen wasn't very old then. He was only 24. Already won plenty, of course, himself. <laughs> but here we are, three decades on. Ronnie O'Sullivan, the world number one. Seven times the winner of this tournament. Thank you, the fourth On the frame. scoreboard in this match. Anthony McGill to break. Of psychology in, in snooker and uh, how the frames are going, but I guess if O'Sullivan was to get to the mid session interval at two each, he'd feel that he'd been outplayed, but not as far as the score is concerned. So he'd like to get this frame one. 3 1 is probably a reflection of what we see in the first three. We haven't seen frame four yet, but McGill has been the better player of the two.
Yield safety has been good today, for sure. The old error, but only very occasional one. Otherwise, he's mostly kept O'Sullivan down at that bulk end and behind colours with not easy shots of his own to follow. Although this looks good for O'Sullivan. Target ball in behind yellow. That is a terrific shot. Exactly as played. Thanks, Lotte. Cue balls being sent round the table from this shot. But you don't know exactly where all the, the balls that you miss are going to finish. He knocked in a good one, O'Sullivan, into this pocket in the previous frame. Close. Well, if he plays off the side of the bunch, you have to be very watchful of any reds drifting near a pocket. I think he had a good look at them, and he looks to have played it pretty well. OK, he's hit the brown. These safety shots are very crucial. This frame, seven and a half minutes old, nothing potted yet. A couple of long pot attempts.
This looks good. Very good safety shot again. You know, I mean, it's one thing to say oh, I'm going to try and blow behind yellow like I started with it or green, uh, green or brown, like he did there in behind brown. But he you know, very well directed shot and puts your opponent always in a lot of trouble. Sullivan looking to play out of a snooker here. He might be able to get to a couple of the reds on the right directly, but to do what with them? It's good play that for McGill, that last shot. Very good. Sullivan now has got into trouble with a couple of these escapes in this match. Well, this one doesn't look very good at all for Ronnie. Foul and a miss. Anthony McGill. Whatever it was he played, it, it was not that. It was a quite an ill directed escape. And I think you could see a couple of reds as well there. Anyway. You could see the annoyance. He's dug in hard in this frame, O'Sullivan. It's now nine and a half minutes. But McGill has won the initial battle, it would seem, safety wise. He's going to have to play it. I mean, I think the miss, the miss has certainly been called. And, but um, I'm not so sure if he had him put back, they'd get a better chance than this. The first red's a little tricky, though. To cut back, you were going into other reds. One. Just flicked a red on the way through. First in again, McGill, earned by a... Very fine safety shot behind the brown. Yeah, and first frame, he had him behind the brown, got in, made a century. So let's see how far he gets here. Of course, since then, O'Sullivan has come to the party with that 89 in the last. Well, that's how far he got. Anthony Miguel won. That's a very serious mistake. He gets a lot of work on the ball with that graphite cue. I've seen him, the cue just roars back down the table. Well, it did there again, but he got nowhere near the yellow for whatever reason. I think there was some movement there behind uh, the, uh, the the bulk end of the table. Yeah, the, the issue is that it, it's the interval on the other side, so people are coming back in, which is not their fault, but obviously he's playing towards them here. Well, very good shot. And you saw from that low camera angle that I mean, got very close to the blue in the pot in the red. It's a very big chance that's come his way through, well, not his own good play, but from the mistake, serious so. one by McGill. Fourteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Yeah, just a little bit more angle on this pink ball than he really wanted. You can just 
stretch over, but he's got to watch the cue ball here. He's going to play off a cushion. Yeah, well, he's ended up on the key red because that red that he's going to play now is the one that was blocking the black off to the left corner. So in, in a way, it's worked out for the best. Twenty-seven. Now that red has wriggled in. It's a very promising opportunity. I always thought it would go. Always this uproar that you see on social platforms of how big these pockets are. Well, I, I think they're pretty fair this week. See no reason to any, for anyone to think that you're not allowed to pop one off the jaw. No, and also, I mean, without sort of going back to the old days, it's true. You never used to see replays of shots. You know, I think if you analysed a few shots from even 30 years ago when he won it the first time, you'd see plenty going in. 34. Anyway, McGill had his chance, didn't he? And it was noticeable he didn't take it this time. He only, in fact, potted one ball and then missed the yellow. So things have turned. It's up to O'Sullivan to try and put the frame away. Be delighted with 2-2 two -two, because he was frozen out largely with the first two. Forty-two. Forty-nine. Forty-nine. 50. Well, it's been a good four frames, enjoyable. Certainly the way that McGill, if you like, sort of took the sting out of O'Sullivan straight away and, and kept him in his chair. And then the lead when O'Sullivan did make an error or two. As you're seeing though, O'Sullivan's not done much wrong. Pot success very high. 57. Quality match this. I expect it to remain that way because McGill seen all the work he's been putting in and it's all for this moment, this day. Doing that practice from every day to get to this level. And he's competed, but he'll be annoyed if he doesn't get to the mid-session interval with a lead and it seems now unlikely that he will. 50. Yeah, I mean, we've said O'Sullivan dug in, but McGill has as well. He dug in to get 65. the initial chance in this frame and then it came to nothing. This red, and it's looking like two each. Snooker's required. 66. Set up nicely for the second half. <laughs> the audience, I'm sure, would love to see Ronnie O'Sullivan send you. For many of them, it might be the first time they get to see one in the flesh. McGill didn't want 74. to see one, obviously, from his perspective. 74. 81. 82. Eighty-nine. So he's just sort of broken free of the shackles that he was put in. Oh, the red has stayed out. But back. eighty-nine is a fine way to end the mini session. It matches the break he had in the third frame. He was in a bit of trouble, being frozen out, two nil down. He found the response. So it's set up nicely as we go to. The mid-session interval here in York this afternoon, Ronnie O'Sullivan and Anthony McGill are all square at two frames each. So 2-2, two, two, all to play for possible seven frames. McGill made the running a century, dominated 
Ryan in the end in frag two, or he won it anyway nicely, but uh, O'Sullivan hit back back to back 89s. Packed house again at the Barbican. Wondering who's going to come through. The winner plays Robert Milkins or Tepchara New there up this evening. Just a reminder that overall head to head coming in was 7 1 to O'Sullivan. The one that McGill won was at the World Championship, but uh, O'Sullivan won their meeting in this event, quarterfinals back in 2014, 6 4. And indeed, most recently this season in Tianjin. See, the safety has favoured McGill, but he didn't make the most of it in that last frame. He got the chance. And Mr. Yellow, pot success, he's favouring O'Sullivan. He's touching both, Ronnie. Spider for extra height. Touching both reds. Caught this too thin, but uh, whether he's left anything seems unlikely. Yes, that's a mistake. Now here is a chance at long range. Already uh, O'Sullivan not uh, dismissing the pot, but thinking about his colour. Natural angle, I think, in potting this cube will just run in towards all the reds. As you can change that, using backspin, going around the back Whoa. of the reds. Sullivan is usually reluctant to just drop in behind the colour unless there's real danger to his opponent. So, playing this around the angles, not close to a red, however. Four.
Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. Yeah, he's clearly appreciating his safety's got to be good. McGill has looked dangerous at times. OK, he didn't take the chance in the fourth, but remember he started the match with a century. So in all areas right now, O'Sullivan is on it. This match has just turned a little in his favour. Again, very well played. You can see the um, he was playing with right hand side to almost swinging the cue ball wide around the table. It's another quite threatening safety shot McGill has played. Brilliant safety shot to hit it first time, even better. Without the need of a, two or three attempts. After a miss being called, first time, bang on. Yeah, he looks really switched on in all areas. As I say, it's a good sign. Prepared to dig in, prepared to plot to graft and play the safety, play the tactical stuff to earn the chance. He knows McGill, he's cut from that sort of cloth himself. He wasn't always a fan of the four-table setup here of Sullivan at York. He, he was a bit busy and, and lots going on and movement and you know a bit cluttered. But he's always preferred the more prestigious setup. And it certainly is here. It's a terrific arena. Really good feel about it. Feels special, which it should do. It's the UK Championship. a big fluke that I mean, it was a dangerous shot to be playing and you know, the risk of missing it was uh, potentially a big one it may not be on a color but even then just seeing the red go in instead of staying on the table and leaving a chance for your opponent is still an important fluke <coughs> Paul's going to finish anywhere once the red doesn't get potted. A dangerous shot to be playing, and you know, the risk of missing it was uh, a 
another frame that's taking a bit of time to get going, but it's intriguingly poised with all these reds spread far and wide. McGill knows the danger is O'Sullivan, if he just starts clicking into a groove and making breaks, this match, you know, in an hour's time could be over. So it seems that he's the one slightly on the back foot at the minute. Well, he looks to, to have a, a bit of a problem here. Trying to find a way up the table. Maybe this is a potting attempt, is it? Just because he can't see a safety shot. Mm, didn't get very close to that. Not very close at all. The opening red, again, just a little bit of a tricky one. But, I mean, really, after that... He, like to think that whoever did put the next ball could make quite a few from here. It's his first little red, a cutback. There's one to the middle, of course, which he might play. Left middle. No, on the first option. So now, yeah. now that it's gone in, black free, when potted to both corner pockets, terrific chance for O'Sullivan. Yeah, McGill's long game has let him down really today. Just one out of five pots from distance. Eight. So although the safety's been good, the attempts at uh, the long reds to get in have not been coming off. No. And you were looking at the last player you want to give a scoring chance to. Obviously, O'Sullivan, top of that centuries list. In fact... Uh, He's made 152 centuries in this event alone over the years. Only 58 40. players. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Plenty in the middle of the table here without too much to think about for a Sullivan. Thirty. Yes, and even the red up the table, so uh, which he may need to just play on here because he's finished just the wrong side of the blue. Could finish where he had his cue pointed there for the red into the left corner as well. Thirty six. I think that was a better shot than it looked because you can easily screw into the green or leave the cue ball close to a cushion. Perfectly judged for the black. And the lead is building all the time. OK, 
Hill has been kept quiet. You know, either side of this mid-session interval. Now it's 23 44. minutes since he last potted a ball. 45. Just getting the feeling the match is turning around a little bit from the early definite supremacy from McGill. He, you know, he's the better player. Not, not anymore, I wouldn't say. Safety's been good, but one or two errors have crept in in the scoring department. 52. Fifty-eight. Frying ball then, and it'll be three on the spin. Fifty-nine. Yeah, the chance looked a good one. We saw that raw talent, of course, 30 years ago. It was more than just talent. It was a kind of inspiration. But, of course, he's become a more complete player over the years. Just a little glance up at the scores there. See what he could afford to do. Well, I don't, don't think it matters now. But he already was in a point where McGill wanted a snooker or two. 65. 66. You speak about Sullivan's raw talent. He still plays the game, you know, as a youthful player, I think, even though he, it was 30 years ago he won this title. Anyway, he's done enough to Royal get to the lead. And the frame. Yeah, pretty swift break of 66, wasn't it? McGill missed the long red. He left the chance. And for the first time this afternoon, Ronnie O'Sullivan is in front. He's made his move. He leads 3-2. So, McGill was looking good at 2-0. He was in control. He was keeping O'Sullivan out. Things have turned round. Two breaks of 89, a 66. O'Sullivan 3-2 up. Best of 11 for a place in the last 16 here at the Barbican. Well, McGill's long red, not easy. O'Sullivan's up into the top left pocket if he plays it. Equally not straightforward. This was not that close. One. Well. Oh, looks good. He's up the green. It will be the brown if it goes, but over to the right there, there's a chance to send the cue ball down towards reds or even into the bunch, perhaps. If land on that bottom red, though, from just below and to the right of it, it would, uh, well, it would give them the chance Brown to open ball, balls you. up in that way. Fine. Six. I think he has to go into them now. I can't believe he wanted to be just where he is, though. That's finishing low on the on the black. Too low for comfort. Yeah, well, it wasn't perfect by any means to 30. be on it. There is next shot. 
give McGill a bit of hope that he'll come back to the table. This is not an easy pot. Fourteen. Well, good signs here. <laughs> As he cans into the pink and loses his way completely. Well, there were good signs until that shot. I was just thinking, Nine. though, you know, British audiences haven't had much of a chance to see him, have they? He played at the English Open in Brentwood. But this is his only other event on UK soil since the World Championship. Royal Sullivan, Nine. Been prioritising China. Anyway, that break is over. <coughs> I don't know if there's any sort of a plant there. He's only had a long look at the bunch into that right corner. I think there might be something close to a plant, but of course close is not good enough if, <laughs> if you leave everything in. It's set up towards that pocket, but no, he decides against it. Yeah, I think you've got to be sure about it because every red would move in the bunch. Anyhow, he uh, decided against anything like that. a few signs of uh, McGill's game losing its cutting edge that we saw earlier on. Started very well. You know, that century break <coughs> took advantage of a mistake from O'Sullivan to win frame two. But since then, he just missed a few. You know, and uh, the sharpness is not quite there now. Now, again, he's looked at this bunch of reds. I think this time he's playing one. <coughs> we saw that last evening from O'Sullivan. Yeah, ignoring all of that. On the screen there, the, the actual number of pots, nine out of ten from distance, as opposed to McGill, one out of seven. So that's made a difference, certainly, in terms of getting in, setting up these chances. So McGill suddenly Six. being frozen out in this match. And Sullivan has found his range, found his confidence, starting to look good. Well, he was looking good. Well, that, miss, that miss really came out of nowhere. Yeah, at a bad moment, really, because like, as you were saying there, you know, he just started to get the upper hand. And it's not the time to miss one and just bring some hope back to your opponent. And you know, sometimes it's not always the good that you do that uh, inspires your opponent. It's the odd mistake that they make. He's not put the ball for a, a while here. 33 minutes. Now he might play it left-handed as well, so 
Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be easy to get off the cold list, if you like. Not putting ball for a while. Anyway, the plant maybe oh. helped. So now what has he got? This is a moment where he has to find some of that early form back. I mean, everyone's different, but it does seem McGill, he's, he's sort of capable of just absorbing himself into the match, as it were. You know, he he's a player who sees the 12 by 6 rather than, you don't sort of see him looking around the, vent, the arena and getting distracted, so... Let's see if he is ready to take this chance. You sort of feel he will be, even though he has struggled the last half an hour or so. Five. Quite a fascinating character, I think. I know Alan has long spoken highly of him, tipped him to be a world champion. Certainly he said when he qualified for the Crucible, he, he would go well there, and he did. And he has done ever since. Yeah, Table is not easy to think that he might win the frame from here. Well, I guess the phone going off wouldn't have helped. Oh, but, uh, 11. The breaks come to an end either way. Well, I can be wrong, but I, I just sensed that was coming. It, he hasn't really got any rhythm back even though those little few shots he potted phone going off of course wouldn't have been in his favour because it, it couldn't possibly be that way could it but uh, he carried on through it Well, it's one of those frames where they've both kind of just gone a bit. Five. And almost mistakes are becoming contagious. It's worse, though, isn't it, when, uh, you know, you're not, it's not as if you've any pressure to miss. It's almost like the just concentration is just, has just gone for a moment or two. Sullivan has got a chance to really pull away from his opponent here. He hasn't taken it in two attempts. Is that going to come back to bite him? We saw it last night. I was doing the, I see the miss again, the Lazowski Jones match, and there, were, there was a spell in that one of the frames there where, you know, it was it was club standard actually, but it can happen. It's about regaining focus. McGill has got an unexpected chance. He struggled for the last sort of 40 minutes in this match, so really has to take this chance now, just get his equilibrium back, if nothing else. Many a time in the past, the mistakes he's made, you know, he would have been buried by an on form Sullivan by now. Seven. Twelve. And the high value colours a little awkward. Black not potable. Getting the pink on his spot would be very handy. Because I think O'Sullivan was interested in that from the, the ready end up missing to the left Seven. corner, getting onto the pink was the plan.
80. Played that well to finish there. Twenty-three. Well, that's come awkwardly, isn't it? Very awkwardly. It's been one of those frames. Anthony McGill. It's gone a little bit flat, but I just feel it's a significant frame now. For whoever wins it, O'Sullivan would take him too clear, having trailed 2-0, and the wind has been taken out both players' sails a little bit. Yeah, maybe the sort of frame 30 years ago he wouldn't have been so equipped to deal with or indeed minded to deal with. Now, this is the long pot stats, as I say. They haven't exactly made happy reading for McGill today. Oh, well, what a shot that is. The action he's got into the white there. Yellow ball. Just allows him to take control of the frame. Anthony McGill get in behind the yellow. People coming down into that general area. Very often you see that shot, it doesn't always end up being a snooker. But so far in behind the yellow, that's what happened. It's a problem with that McGill was trying to get the cue ball sort of tight to the yellow himself. He didn't. Now suddenly he's in trouble. Quite a big frame, really. He's you know he's lost the last three. The standard has dropped in this one. If you could just scramble it. We go again at 3-3, three, three, but if he goes 4-2 down, he's got a lot of work to do suddenly. 
Yeah, and he's in a spot of bother now because this is uh, it's one thing hitting the snooker, but of course keeping the ball safe. It looks like he might go in for the two cushion glance. And he was never going to hit it. I'm not even sure with any certainty which foul. Reddy was match. trying to Running play thin off. Yeah. I reckon the middle one of the three. But either way, you're going to have to do better than that. And the chance that you could leak 12 or 16 points on the shot, which could be important points at this juncture of a frame. You know, and he can't afford to leave one and you have to find the happy medium between the two, I suppose. Anthony? Just before middle pocket, I had. Yeah? Yeah, I can check it if you want. Yeah, it, I don't remember it being quite as... I thought I could see all of us. That's what I mean, just before my little back. No, sort of like easily. Ah, oh, right, okay. Yeah, I'll dialogue check between it, right. player and referee just to ensure the balls are replaced in the absolutely correct position. And it looks right, doesn't it? it looks like a. Uh, looks perfect here. Take That's one. Okay, wrong. Okay. Yeah, thanks. So we go again. I think he's trying to hit the middle red, glancing the left side of it from what I can. Work out from attempt one. Oh, that's like a carbon copy of the last shot. Foul, no miss. Ronnie will be staying in his chair Brian for the foreseeable, four. I think. Desi, can you bring it up, please, for the for the yellow? Yeah, just got to obviously readjust where the yellow was. Desi Slava Boschel over on the. Marker's desk there Just with the freeze frame technology. And half bow this way. It's not quite VAR, really, is it? But uh, maybe just Daniel's they do their best with what they've got. Yeah. yeah, I mean, sometimes I always think that the sort of a, Very a, a tiny ball over the cue ball doesn't have to be to replaced right. correctly. But of course, the yellow does because the cue ball's behind the yellow. Yeah. So that's got to okay. be right as yeah. well. I don't think you could have imagined that the yellow was going to be moved there, so Rob clearly wouldn't know where it was placed originally. He wouldn't have taken a note of it anyway. Answer. This okay. shot he's Thanks. playing, he might have to try something diff Sorry. different okay. because he hasn't looked like hitting it yet. He's gone directly and equally between those two reds. Big adjustment required. This isn't going to change. He's not going to hit this. Any time soon, I don't think. And as I say, these points aren't amounting to much. But uh, you Doesn't know, if you used to miss five times, you give 20 one points one. away. That's an, the four one that's a lot of yeah, mileage, I think, at this point in the frame. Yeah, I think Thanks. in the arena that the four points yeah. went on the wrong player, but uh, they've gone on O'Sullivan's now. It's correct on our screen. <laughs> Gradually getting oh, closer, goodness. but he still hasn't hit it, basically. Now, has he left a free ball? No, no, no. There's yeah. a red on the right, of course, but... Uh, <coughs> as you make the adjustment too much, and you end up crashing into the red full ball that you're trying to hit thin. That could happen. Anthony, OK? Yeah, all right. <laughs> right, number five. Well, you can see what he was trying to do, and I suppose getting there in the end, maybe the 16 points were worth giving away.
sort of game that you sort of do associate with McGill, the, the more tactical game, but he's on the other end of it here. Uh, more trouble and it's been the story of this frame really minute and a half looking at this now yes he can get to the right hand side of that uh, the, the red of the two close together but it's for some reason these are very difficult shots to catch thin anything but the thinnest of contacts it seems the cue ball doesn't go anywhere it doesn't make it past the blue spot the red can follow it up the table so he's playing as if snookered again. Or he's thinking of it. And of course he has a f f full ball contact with the right hand red. So if he misses twice, it, it would be a warning of some kind. Anyway, I think he, you know what I think he did oh, there? He believed that the two reds might be a plan. And he felt that maybe he'd pop the right hand red. It'd be interesting to see because if the shot was on last time, it's on again. You know, he, I think he's trying to pop this right hand red here. Because he thinks that he just might squeeze in down the cushion. Yeah. So hitting it might mean potting it. Of course, he could easily end up over the pocket as well. Foul. The surely he gets warned here, does he not? I'm, I'm, as I understand it, he can see that right hand red. We haven't seen down the line, but referee will give a warning. He's looking to play the same shot. I'm sure he'll get warned though, which might stop him. Yeah. No? Why no warning? Anthony needs warning. I was just checking it, it was two, awesome? that's all, yeah. So I have to call the miss as a result of this stroke. I'll award the frame to your opponent, OK? I thought I was losing my mind, Dave. No, you're quite right. The warning has come. You've got to hit one, otherwise it's 4-2. That's the bottom line. You can see the red on the right. There's Rob Spencer. Just in time, the warning was issued. I suppose that just underlines the trouble he was in because he made an absolute mess of it, didn't he? Playing a double kiss, he had to hit, hit it at all. Anyway, not much of a frame, but it might be a big one in the context of the whole thing. At the moment, they're both scrambling around looking for the next ball to pot. <coughs> So despite his many problems in this frame, and all the fouls he's given away, he does have some sort of chance now. Eight.
nine. And it will probably come down to not positionally, and of course the red after it, wherever. Don't want to be straight, of course. Oh, that's okay. That, the two Fourth. slide along that cushion very accommodatingly. Well, that surely isn't going to drop. Anthony McGill, 14. Well, so Solid's birthday next week. This is an early gift. Five in front, red over the pocket. 4 2 beckons. One. Thank you. Just played out into an area there, no doubt. And the area has worked out well. I think it was a clever shot. He didn't, I don't think he played on anything in particular. But he's finished in line with the brown. He's got to keep his concentration up now, or certainly regather it anyway. Fine. Yellow, green, and brown is what he needs. Seven. It's not been the most aesthetically pleasing frame, but the crowd roaring him on to win it, nonetheless. I'll go as far as to say it's been a pretty horrible frame, Dave. Not so much that the balls have gone awkwardly, but both players have... Um, their concentration has dipped. I think that's an understatement. But they all count. And the fact that O'Sullivan is going to win it is the biggest <laughs> and most significant moment of it all. Absolutely. Sometimes bad frames can feel really significant when there's been a lot of chances. 19. It's a bit of a hammer blow to the person who loses it. McGill had the chance, missed the last red. Left it hanging in the jaws of the pocket. 25. And O'Sullivan has taken advantage. So he's going to be two from victory. And there's the reaction from the crowd. They'd lo love to see him win the frame. Whatever standard it was. 4-2. He's two away from the last 16 here in York. Thank you. The seventh frame. This frame, really. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. So Sullivan four, McGill two in this race to six. Wasn't a particularly good shot to start this seventh frame either. Given one chance, maybe a double to the left middle or that long red. Something that could get him in early. Not easy to start with, however. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Didn't hit this all that well. And if he went for the pot, which I suspect he must have, you know, it was a wide, really. One. That was nice. There was a lot of distance to cover between cue ball and object ball there to stop that cue ball and the spin on it just dying off. Oh, this is a good shot. I know that uh, he's a wonderful positional player, but he's landed the cue ball. Four. Almost on a sixpence there. Fine. I'm not sure if the left hand red of the bunch pots anywhere. Yeah, he can get in behind that and then open the red. So the next shot is very key. I mean, it's, it's uh, one where the reds will spread. 12. Question of how much. Maybe 
he didn't quite open up as he would have hoped. Twenty. Championship performance changed over the years, but the last time he lost his first match in the tournament, so the round he came in was back in 2010. There were two years after that he didn't play at all, but he tends to usually get over the first hurdle. Now, can he get them open here and really take a grip on this match? Well, I think he can after that shot. The Reds have really split. If this Red is 35. rolled into the left centre, then there's no obvious reason why we shouldn't make plenty from this. Thirty-six. Yeah, I mean, that last frame, it was a test of concentration, but he won it. So at least he came out of it with the frame on the board. And just seems to reset here. This is much more the sort of snooker course he likes to play. Forty one. Forty. Thinking about the first shot that McGill played here, that red to left corner in this frame, it, on the back of that sticky earlier frame. Thirty one minutes of it, frame six. He just a bit half hearted and. Okay, Ronnie did put a good opening red up into the green pocket, but it's almost like McGill has slightly given up, and uh, this break won't uh, make him feel any better about things that Ronnie's now making. 48. The strong chance of pulling away in this match now. Yeah, I mean, he's certainly got the focus 54. back here. 54. Yeah, I just think winning that frame has helped, hasn't it? You, it's a bit of a bonus when you get a frame one like that. Especially having been 2 nil down and it amounts to four in a row, whatever way you get them. You can see from up the table there that left hand red of the four from up on the right side by above the pink. It might be potable. He's looking for various ways in which he can pot a red from here. Reds are slightly awkwardly placed, mostly in each other's way. I'm not sure what he played there. I thought he was going to have the other side on that cue ball 61. and check it back into the reds. They had reverse size on it and it was nowhere near them. 'er red he'd like to keep the break going but if it's not going to keep going he doesn't want to play safe off the red up by his arm at the moment he wants to leave it there 
Ron if someone like a Mark Selby in this situation, he'd be looking to nail every red to the cushion. Good shot from O'Sullivan, you know. Maybe unnoticed, he just steered that cue ball into a, a safe area. He knows that this frame is he's not one yet, but he's a very strong favourite to win it. Absolutely brilliant, and you feel it's effectively frame ball. Of course, he's still got to pot a couple more, but those last two shots really just illustrating the way things have shifted. McGill went for the cross double, didn't get it. O'Sullivan finds a great one. Green puts him 65 in front, so one more red needed. Four. Not there though, it's a slight stretch. Four. Yeah, and he's a bit annoyed actually. Yeah, because these frames can be stolen from here. There's nothing difficult about where any of the balls are. Obviously the clearance has got to be made. He might be able to pot a red here. But of course high value colours are going to be needed anyway. Given that he's not playing all that well, this opening red's going to be a test. Doesn't want to be on the blue, that will not really be enough. He will need the pink, and then it'll be all black. So Nessie plays on the black here. Plays for the black, but that, I mean, that's a more difficult shot than the pink. Had to pot it. Need snookers now. Two of them. Anthony McGill one. And he's left an initial red. Yeah. Had to get it. The stage was set for a potential clearance. Pink wasn't straightforward. Well, he started so well. First couple of frames, very good for McGill. And the last couple, the complete opposite. One. It's almost like he, in losing that earlier frame, all the wind was taken out of his sails. He can't get them back. He's missing pots by a long way. Generally, he doesn't look up for the match as much now as he was. Well, he's just not scoring. He's not made a 30 break since frame two, Eight. McGill. So, he's just not going to cut it, I'm afraid. Nine. Thanks. <laughs> Fifteen. To win this title at 17 was remarkable. 
to win it just before his 48th birthday would be remarkable. He'd be the oldest and the youngest UK champion. 22. 23. He hasn't done it yet, but uh, once he could, and the fact that he's still yeah, in contention to be the oldest winner of these events, that's why he, people 30. think of him as the greatest of all time now without any real doubts about it. Not only the, 32. the tournaments he's won that he's chalked up, but just that longevity all these years still being a top player there's never really been anyone Third quite like this in snooker no and there may never be again and that's why for all the kind of noise that comes along with it you have to enjoy it you have to enjoy watching him appreciating his incredible achievements the crowd certainly here today i mean it hasn't been the high standard let's be honest all the way through but they've really enjoyed it and they'll enjoy seeing him win one more frame because that's all he needs now. 44. To get this one. McGill has faded, it has to be said, as the match has gone on. He was looking really good at 2-0. Struggling now, and O'Sullivan's taken advantage. And Ronnie O'Sullivan needs one more to reach round two. 5-2. McGill will have to win the last four to stay in this year's UK Championship. As he attempts to kill it off. Thank you. The eighth frame. Anthony McGill to break. Afraid. That was a mile out again, and that's as I say, like that shot in the previous frame. But when it went 4 2, the first shot he played was a, a bit too carefree, or you know, I don't know whether it was any, any sign of being demoralized or what. But this was even worse. I mean, he's absolutely missed that by a proverbial mile. What? And now it's gone from a really tight game that he was playing to. Handing Ronnie O'Sullivan chances all over the place, quite honestly. And what a chance, and he's always been the greatest Six. of front runners. O'Sullivan just devouring situations like this from the front all his career, and there's Seven. no reason to think that he mightn't do the same. Yeah, he so often will win a match with a big break. McGill fearing that could happen here, I'm sure. Forty. There is still the fight for number one. He's, of course, there right now. Judd Trump is a close pursuer. Brussel has an outside 15. chance. Mark Allen, of course, has been knocked out. Twenty. Twenty-one. Well, that's a sort of list of the the size of breaks. 
that uh, century, of course, from the guild that was in frame one, but since then, 56 in frame two, and then nothing over 30. Twenty six. Twenty six. The reds all lined up down the centre of the table here, very invitingly. He's just gone a bit too far. With the cue ball's kind of running into reds, whether he wants them to or not. They'd be quite annoyed if he doesn't get this uh, next positional shot. I think. Really got into the cue ball. That was not as planned, I can tell you. 32. It's got to play a recovery shot when it didn't seem like that was about to happen. Or well, didn't have to happen. So oh, very nice. It's a beautiful rest shot. Now, something we don't think about O'Sullivan with the rest, we said it earlier. The afternoon. 30 years ago to the day a star was born, the star still shines brightly three decades on. Ronnie O'Sullivan had to tough it out at times today. It wasn't straightforward. It was McGill who made the early running going 2-0 up. But O'Sullivan responded. He finishes in style. He's into the last 16 of the UK Championship a winner by six frames to two.